In just a few weeks, my lawn will go from looking like this to this. But before I get started this season, I want to share five easy mistakes you can avoid making this season as you strive to have the best looking lawn in your neighborhood. Here we go. Like any other plant or living thing for that matter, the lawn requires water to sustain its growth pattern. In general, cool season lawns like my mix of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye need about an inch of water a week to avoid drying out, going dormant, or any other issues related to water. I've been guilty of screwing up on both ends of the spectrum here, not watering the lawn enough and watering too much. Solving this problem is really simple. All you need are a few empty chicken or tuna cans to spread across the yard, especially in the areas that you know are being affected. After you've placed them around the yard, run your sprinklers for a complete watering cycle. Once the cycle's finished, stick a tape measure in each can and measure how much water's been collected. So if you're watering twice a week and you need an inch total for the week of water, you should expect to see something pretty close to a half an inch of water in each can that you're measuring. Dialing in your sprinklers to give a half inch of water each time a cycle runs and double checking for full coverage ensures a green lawn all season long. Mowing the lawn regularly and properly is key to maintaining a thick, healthy lawn. Depending on how fast it's growing, this may mean you should really be mowing more than once a week. Here's how to tell. Take a second and measure how tall the grass is before you cut it. Then compare that measurement to the height of cut setting you've chosen on your mower. If you have your mower set to cut the lawn at 3 inches, you shouldn't be cutting off more than 1 inch, or in other words, one third of the total height of the lawn, hence the one third rule. So in this case, once the lawn is 4 inches tall, it's time to mow. You might be thinking, but I just mowed it three days ago. Time to mow again. And if you must break the rule, bag your clippings at the very least and don't make this a habit. Consistently mulching overgrown grass will build up the thatch layer beneath the canopy of the grass and cause issues and more work later on. Proper mowing habits are extremely important when it comes to achieving a thick, green, and healthy lawn. Have you ever noticed that the tips of the grass blades are kind of frayed, or that there's a yellow tinge across the lawn after you've mowed? When you see these clues, even in the slightest, it's more than likely time to sharpen your blade. Mowing with a sharp blade is a great way to prevent disease and other issues around the lawn. How often you need to sharpen the blades depends on how frequently and how much area you're mowing. But for the average homeowner, a general rule of thumb is to get it done at least once a season. Me personally, I mow about 10,000 square feet twice weekly and sharpen my blades about three times throughout the season. There are lots of options out there for getting your blades sharp. You can take it to someone who's experienced with sharpening blades, or there are several tools on the market for the DIYer. My baseline suggestion is an angle grinder with a 60 grit flap disc. If you want to invest a bit more and step up your game, consider something like the All-American Sharpener tool to help you keep the same angle each time you grind off the edge of the blade. Even though sharpening your blade can seem like a tedious maintenance task, I promise it makes a huge difference when it comes to the quality of your lawn. One of the most important things I've learned when it comes to taking care of my own lawn is to understand what it needs. Soil tests are an easy, inexpensive, and accessible way to understand the basic needs of your lawn. 
instead of throwing any random products off the shelf into the lawn and hoping you get decent results that last, you can understand what your soil might be deficient or overly sufficient of and then find products that will actually meet your lawn's needs. Like our bodies, the lawn is healthier and easier to maintain with nutritional balance. If you've never tested your soil before, give it a try. It's a really interesting experience and opens the door to a lot of really cool things you can learn about improving the overall quality and health of the soil and consequently, the lawn. It's easy to want the best looking lawn in the neighborhood, but there are so many variables that depending on what your current situation is, getting the lawn in top shape might not happen in a single season. If at the very least you can practice the basic items I've mentioned here, you can expect to see results. Now should you expect to have a lawn that looks like a golf course by next fall? Probably not. But will it look better than it did? Very likely. Take some pictures throughout the season and look back on them to see your progress. You'd be surprised how much the little changes add up over time. Plus, if you're like me, having pictures of the lawn in its prime is really helpful to look at during the winter months when you're stuck in the house. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and you can't expect your lawn to turn from zero to hero that quick either. Enjoy the process. Cherish each moment along the way and take pride in the work that you've done. So there you go, there's hopefully five helpful tips to get you started this season. Things to keep in mind as you go and progress through the year and hopefully they're helpful for you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that as well. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you have planned for the season, what you're looking forward to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you next time.